Decide which image you'd like to measure. Click Show My List to see all of your options. When selecting an image to measure, you can either choose from My Images, or if you don't have enough, you can select from your class images. The first image you'll want to select is a dark image. Select a dark image from your set labeled with Dark C. Remember, the dark you want to choose for your image appears after all of the images in your set, at the end of the list. The file names will be very similar and will come from the same date. A dark is an image that's taken while intentionally not letting any light through. If the detector was perfect, every pixel value for a dark image would be zero, since the image was taken with the shutter closed, letting no light through. If we check out the pixel values, we can see they're all around 300. And the image also has some bright spots that aren't stars, but are called hot pixels, which are flaws within the detector itself. Since no detector is perfect, we measure the baseline for our particular detector and subtract that out of every image so we can have a clean slate to start measuring from. Next, click Subtract Dark to remove the extra noise that's part of the telescope's detector itself. If you look at the pixel values of one of your images before you subtract the dark image, you'll notice that they're all very high. The pixel values themselves in the background are in the high 300s, and the values inside the circle, or the total brightness inside the circle, is between 22 and 23,000. However, if you look at the pixel values of one of your images after subtracting the dark image, you'll see that the values are much lower. The pixel values themselves in the background are now all around 50, and the values inside the circle, or the total brightness inside the circle, is near 3,000. The difference is all of the noise inherent to the detector itself that gets removed when you subtract a dark image. Click Show My List to select the first image you want to measure. Click on Locate Target Star to bring up a star finder chart. See if you can find patterns in both the finder chart and your image display. Then, drag the finder chart over the displayed image and match up the star patterns. The finder chart is partly transparent, so you can see the image displayed underneath. Once your chart is lined up, you can begin to measure. First, click on the Measure Target Star box to make sure it's selected. You'll see it turn white if it wasn't white already. If you accidentally clicked in the image window while you were aligning your finder chart, that total brightness value will appear in the Measure Target Star box. You can take the actual target star total brightness value by now clicking on the star labeled with T. That's your target star. You can click right on the star itself with the finder chart overlaid on top of the image. Use the box in the upper right to help you center your star as much as possible inside of the yellow circle. Next, click on the first of the two comparison star boxes, which will turn white. Then, click on one of the stars labeled with C for a comparison star. Click on the second comparison star box, which will also turn white, before clicking on the second star labeled with C, the second comparison star. You'll need to always manually select which measurement you'd like to make next. Next, click on the first box under Measure Two Dark Areas of Night Sky, and then do just that. Click on a dark part of the sky that has no stars inside the yellow circle. Measure the second point by first clicking on the second box, and then a different portion of sky. Now that we have our measurements, it's time to calculate the relative brightness of our target star. The first time you make this measurement, it's important to know exactly what's going on behind the scenes. As we saw earlier, the background sky in your images isn't completely dark and have pixel values of well above zero. In order to get a more accurate reading of just how bright your stars are, we need to know what our baseline for dark really is. So first, find the average of your two background sky measurements. We'll write our background average as BA. Subtract the average background sky measurement, BA, from your three star measurements, the target star and two comparison stars. We'll write these new and improved background subtracted star measurements as T prime, C1 prime, and C2 prime. Next, We'll need a good average baseline for the brightness of your comparison stars, so we can compare the value to the brightness of the target star. 
find the average brightness of the two dark subtracted comparison stars to find one value. We'll call this new and improved background subtracted an average compare star measurement, C prime A. Finally, divide your brightness for the background subtracted target star by the average of the two background subtracted comparison stars, and you have your relative brightness. After you've done the calculations, go ahead and click Calculate and Record to check your answer. Do they match? Use the arrow buttons to advance to the next image and take some more measurements. Make sure to click on each box before making the measurements to make sure you're recording the right numbers and not writing over any previously made measurements. If you do make a mistake, you can re-measure any time by simply clicking the box again before making the measurement. When you're happy with all of your measurements, click Calculate and Record to save your data.